The basics of AFib. Let's talk about it real quick. So whether you're a beginner or whether you're just reviewing, this is some good information. Okay, we're going to cover some small things here. So first of all, what makes it AFib? How are you identifying AFib? The jump out characteristic should always be the AFib is an irregularly irregular rhythm, right? So the rhythm at which the QRS complexes fall has no rhyme or reason. There's no even spacing between them or anything like that, okay? You may or may not even see fibrillation waves, especially in people who are uh, who have well controlled AFib. They're on uh, daily, you know, PO calcium channel blockers and stuff like that. You may not even see a fibrillation wave. So learn to identify it because it's irregularly irregular. So let's have a look at a textbook case of AFib here. So here you can clearly see the fibrillation waves and things like that. Um, you can see them in between every complex. But let's pay particular attention to the length of time in between each complex. Notice how no two are the same. None of them follow any rhyme or reason, right? And one old uh, trick to do this is to take your six second strip and or, or longer and fold it over and hold it up to the light and line up two QRS complexes. And if none of the other ones line up when one of them are lined up, you're looking at AFib. That's an irregularly irregular rhythm. So let's have a look at this one, okay? Look at it through that view. And as you can see, you don't really have any discernible P waves. Those could be fibrillation waves, but you know they also look like, uh, look like a lot of the artifact you might get driving down the road or something like that. Um, but if you were to take this and fold it over or just notice that there is no uh, identical spaces in between each QRS complex, you would know that that's AFib. Okay? So when do we treat it? We treat AFib when the patient is unstable. All right. Whether you have to get orders or whether you can administer meds and electricity when you feel like it, uh, AFib should be treated in the pre-hospital setting only when there's a potential for harm for the patient. And there's a good reason for that. I know there's a lot of really aggressive uh, providers out there that really want to go for it. But the the schedules on which they will convert someone from AFib uh, in the hospital or under the care of a physician, they can last for weeks. And there's a really good reason for it. The physicians who are going to fix this person can prescribe them anticoagulants. They can put them on thinners and things that will dissolve any clots that have formed for whatever length of time this person was in AFib so that when they do cardiovert them, um, whether it's chemically or, elect or electrically, it's much safer for the patient. They're much less likely to throw a clot and have a stroke or a PE or, or something along those lines. So uh, we only treat AFib in the field when there's a potential for harm for the patient. So when are they unstable? When they can't mentate, right? When their blood pressure is too low, when it's AFib with a rapid ventricular response and the heart just cannot keep that pace up for very long because it's going so fast and it's causing ischemia due to the tachycardia. That's when we treat AFib. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.